Hi, my name is David Masika, and I'm a postdoctoral fellow in Rachel Karchin's lab at the Johns Hopkins University in the Department of Biomedical Engineering and the Institute for Computational Medicine. In this video, I'll be presenting a study on behalf of my collaborators and myself that was recently published in Human Mutation. So let's get started. The paper is entitled Phenotype Optimized Sequence Ensembles Substantially Improved Prediction of Disease Causing Mutation in Cystic Fibrosis. In this study, we developed a novel computational method to predict cystic fibrosis disease liability from genetic mutation. Virtually all patients with cystic fibrosis have mutation in both copies of their CFTR genes, which encode for the cystic fibrosis transmembrane conductance regulator protein. So specifically, we are predicting cystic fibrosis from CFTR missense mutation. Now, a common computational approach to this sort of problem is a sequence-based approach where you take a group of genes, including your gene of interest, and you align their sequences, and then from the multiple sequence alignment, you can infer things about substitution tolerance at different positions in your gene of interest. Sometimes these methods work reasonably well, but a common challenge is determining in advance which sequences to include in your multiple sequence alignment. That is, what set of sequences will allow your method to most optimally predict the phenotype you're trying to predict. So we tried to address that challenge in this work by developing what we call phenotype-optimized sequence ensembles, or poses. We begin by getting a multiple sequence alignment for CFTR homologs and paralogs from the UCSC 46-way genome-wide vertebrae alignments and this gives us a total of 547 CFTR homologs and paralogs. The POSE score function considers three properties when scoring an amino acid substitution. The SELF property just describes the amino acid conservation at a particular column in the alignment. We also consider the amino acid chemistry conservation, and we also consider the molecular weight. The POSE algorithm begins with an initial sequence pool. Here it's those 547 CFTR uh, orthologs and paralogs. It takes a random ensemble of those sequences. Then using those sequences and the score function, it scores a set of CFTR mutations of known cystic fibrosis disease liability. Now, since we know the disease liability of the mutations we're scoring, we can calculate the predictive value of our predictions. And in this case, we're calculating the sensitivity and specificity. We repeat this entire process 25,000 times. But, and here's the magic, every 100 times, we repopulate the initial sequence pool with the top 1% of ensembles based on their predictive value. So you can imagine over time, the sequence pool from which we're drawing our random ensembles becomes enriched for the sequences that best allow us to predict our phenotype, i.e. cystic fibrosis. So it's from this process that we derive poses, which we can subsequently use to predict the disease liability of other CFTR missense mutations. To develop our CFTR poses, we needed a training set of known CFTR causing mutations and mutations thought to be disease neutral. To get the disease-causing mutations, we went to the CFTR2 website, and to get the disease-neutral mutations, we curated from the literature. So we used this training set of mutations to develop the pose, but then we needed a second set of disease-neutral and disease-causing CFTR mutations to test how well our method worked. And we found the test set of mutations in a 2010 clinical genetics paper by Dorfman et al. And when we use the poses obtained during training, along with our score function to predict blindly on these test set mutations, here's how well the algorithm discriminates between CF causing and CF neutral mutations. Figure A is a rock curve, and you can see we get a good AUC of 0.84, and the strip chart in figure B shows good separation between the CF causing and CF neutral predictions. This next table shows the predictive value obtained by our method on the test set mutations, namely the sensitivity, specificity, positive predictive value, and negative predictive value. And taking these numbers together, you can see that we do a pretty good job at 
accurately calling the true positives and an excellent job at accurately classifying the true negatives. So next we wanted to compare our method to existing methods predicting on these same test set mutations. So here's the predictive value we got for SIFT. You see a really high sensitivity, but a much lower specificity for this particular system. And we get a similar result for polyphen 2, a very high sensitivity and low specificity, and a slightly more balanced result using Panther. And I want to point out here that we're getting this really well-balanced result, probably because we optimized on the sum of sensitivity and specificity. We could have chosen any one of these predictive values to optimize on. Next we wanted to see if the increased performance achieved by our method came from the sequence optimization or the new score function. So we used our score function but on multiple sequence alignments that didn't arise from optimization. So using CFTR orthologs only, our scoring function got good sensitivity but pretty low specificity. We then scored each of the 12 parologous groups independently and the ABCC9 parallelogous group gave us the best mix of sensitivity and specificity. Here you see decent sensitivity again and an increased specificity relative to just looking at the orthologs. And here is using all homologs. We take a sensitivity hit and a big increase in specificity. So if you look at these last three examples, you see that we get more specificity out of the orthologs and a little bit more specificity out of the paralogs most likely. And it would appear that our optimization method is finding the sequences within these groups that best balances the sensitivity and specificity. So last we wanted to see if using poses optimized to balance sensitivity and specificity could be used with other methods to also balance sensitivity and specificity in their predictions. So we did that for both SIFT and Polyphen. And what you can see indeed in both cases is at least a slightly better balance of sensitivity and specificity relative to those methods using their native multiple sequence alignments for CFTR. So this suggests that using poses could also be useful just to develop the multiple sequence alignment and then you could go ahead and use that multiple sequence alignment um, with existing scoring functions. So we thank you for watching the video and hope you'll check out the manuscript in Human Mutation. Goodbye.